Have you ever felt overcommitted, overwhelmed by deadline, or just simply burned out? Or maybe you in flow and you just want to sustain that flow of productivity. In this video, you will have the solution just for that. And guess what? This solution comes from within. Hey guys, I just wanted to grab your attention just for a quick sec. I want to share something that I'm so excited about. In January 2020, I'm starting my new online training program, the Time Flies Academy. If you are a busy corporate professional or corporate manager and you're working 50 to 60 hours a week and you are almost burning out and you never have time for the things that are truly important for you like spending time with your family working on a passion project or a side business or just simply taking care of your health and you wish you had a system to bring you back to 40 hours a week then this training is for you with the framework inside this program you will be able to save 10 to 20 hours a week which is almost a thousand hours in a year, which is more than a whole month back of your time. And this is where it gets really, really exciting. The first launch in January 2020 is going to be at a highly discounted price because that's gonna be the first launch and that's a special price for the founding members. You definitely wanna be a founding member. If this sounds interesting to you, just sign up for the wait list you have the link in the notes of this video or maybe in the link right here and see you there. You'll have much more information coming your way very soon. You'll be the first one to know. So without further ado, just come back to the video. Hey, bonjour, I'm Hugo and I help busy professionals be more productive and get back in control of their own time. And I'm Dr. Chelly and I help people take mindful, committed actions towards their life altering goals. Today we're going to talk about mindfulness and how you can incorporate it into your daily life for improved quality of life, sleep, and productivity. If this sounds good and if you like what you're watching, give us a thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to the channel if you want to know and see more content like this. Don't forget to ring the bell as usual if you want to have all the notifications every time I upload new content. There's some really good content in there. Thank you. Yeah. Mindfulness is very popular right now, right? It's uh, increasingly getting more popular. And it's because of its positive outcome on stress, on sleep, on productivity, on well being, and overall health. Mindfulness has been around for centuries and it's coming from Hinduism and Buddhism. So, mindfulness was popularized by Dr. John Cabot Zinn and he's the one that is credited for bringing it to the Western culture. And the way that he defines mindfulness is paying attention on purpose in a particular way, but the key is to do it non-judgmentally. And what do I mean by that? So we tend to be judging the judges. We judge everything. So either things are good or bad, they're pretty or ugly, or um, they're, someone is competent or incompetent. Mindfulness helps us to pay attention to those things. So what happens when we start judging things, we judge our thoughts, we judge our emotions, we judge our behaviors, we judge others and ourselves. And when we do that, what happens is that that can lead us to distress. So when we start thinking of ourselves or judging in those ways, it may make us more prone to symptoms of depression and anxiety. Yeah, for example, when you are behind on some deadlines or with colleagues or clients inquiring about your progress on, hey, have you done, have you done your work? And if you haven't, then you can feel bad. Like, I'm not enough. Right. I'm, I'm an imposter or this, what I was thinking or all these things, like I cannot, I'm not capable of doing this. Mm -hmm. Or we could do it the other way where we could say, oh, who do they think they are? They're micromanaging me. Um, they, they think this and that about me. And so that, what that happens is that it starts unraveling our, our thoughts and it starts unraveling the way that we think and, and feel and you mm -hmm. start turning on things on yourself right like you take right. things personally mm -hmm. uh, by the way there is something that really helps me on that 
it's the four agreements like mm. the book you okay. know, I, I think we talked about yeah that. you made a video about that yeah exactly oh yeah. by the way i made a video about that yeah. about the four agreements uh, from uh, don miguel ruiz it's 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 my favorite book as you as you guys know the thing is when we don't feel good about ourselves that definitely impacts our productivity and well-being yeah so especially since i mentioned how we may be prone to anxiety or symptoms of depression doesn't mean that we may have the clinical diagnosis um, to meet criteria but it means that uh, maybe we have some of those symptoms and so when we have symptoms of depression or anxiety that can impact our work our productivity and then when that happens then we feel worse about ourselves and we start doing this negative spiral. Yeah. And so mindfulness is really important to incorporate into our daily life because studies have shown that mindfulness can be helpful to our well being. And I think that's why it's getting a lot of attention right now. Mindfulness is being incorporated um, in the workplace, in prisons, uh, with children, um, adults, so of all ages throughout the lifespan. Um, and because mindfulness is, is showing that there's some positive effects on health and well-being, on uh, emotional stability, on productivity, on health, even on, on physical health. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff about mindfulness and um, what we're talking about today is hopefully can help you start incorporating into your daily life and building a daily habit. That's a perfect segue. Now let's take action. How can we take action about mindfulness? How can we incorporate this into our daily life? The goal is to actually incorporate it as a daily habit, mm -hmm. like brushing our teeth. Uh, about that, you can also refer to this video uh, where I talk about how to create uh, daily habits, how to create new habits that stick. One thing to acknowledge is that it can be difficult at first like mm -hmm. any change like anything that you in try to incorporate in your life um, any change in learning can be a little bit uncomfortable at times mm -hmm. right and especially with mindfulness because our mind wanders a lot mm -hmm. and your own mind will not really help you being mindful so you need to be mindful of that so mindfulness, the, the active practice of mindfulness can be challenging sometimes. And there's a distinction between mindfulness and meditation, which we'll make another video about that. Uh, for the purpose of this video, what, what makes the practice of mindfulness challenging is that we go into autopilot. And by autopilot, I mean that, um, have you ever you know, had a long day at work and you're so preoccupied with deadlines and things that you have to do and so then it's time to go home and you have to go you know pick up a friend or pick up your kids and so you get in the car you put on the seat belt you start the car you're on the road and you make a left turn you make a right turn you get on the highway you exit you go left you go right and boom you're in, that, in your house and then you're like how did i get here what just happened <laughs> <laughs> what just happened i don't even remember putting on my seat belt right yeah exactly and so we go into this autopilot that we're not really thinking we're mindless right we're mindlessly reacting to things that are happening but when we practice mindfulness it's about bringing ourselves to the present moment and being able to respond and not react and so our mind is kind of funny that way in that it, you have a thought and then it triggers another thought and it triggers another thought and another thought and another thought and, another thought, and it just da -da 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 -da, right exactly and then that's when if you notice your body it starts getting overwhelmed even right now i just ran out of a little breath just like <laughs> da -da -da -da, you know um and so when we practice mindfulness it's not about having our mind clear of anything mm -hmm. uh, i'm not thinking about my problems it's just that we're noticing huh i noticed that I'm having these thoughts, right? Hmm. And then we can get curious about it. I wonder what that thought means, mm -hmm. right? Or I wonder why that came up for me. And what we're doing with the active practice of mindfulness and not judging it is that we're pausing, we're taking a break um, and to just notice what's going on. So in this video, we want to propose two ways of practicing mindfulness. Uh, the first one is to, as you were mentioning, is to pers purposefully noticing thoughts or things that are happening uh, that are around you. So let's, let's practice. 
uh, let's take a moment and just for five seconds, just notice your thoughts. So five, four, three, two, one. What did you notice? What came up for you? One way to center ourselves, or another way of saying that is to ground ourselves or to bring us back to the present moment, is to just notice, right? So notice what thoughts came up for you right now, right? Maybe you're thinking this video is helpful. Maybe you're thinking this video went on a little too long. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's not possible. These guys, these guys love this content. <laughs> I know, I, I know. It's really great content, right? So I'm just noticing those thoughts like, wow, this is really hopeful. I haven't thought about it that way. Notice what kind of emotions that you're having. I'm not going to the heart because that's just kind of your emotion sits for me. Maybe you, you decided to watch this video because you're struggling with staying focused and being productive and you needed a quick tip or something to help you regain that focus, right? Mm -hmm. So then this video is perfect for you. Notice the physical sensations, right? This is a thing we often forget is the physical body. And just kind of notice, is your body tense, right? Um, so for someone like me, I have chronic back pain. So that's the first thing I notice right away. If my body feels like this, right? Or notice your breathing. Are you breathing from your chest or are you breathing from your belly? If you're breathing from your chest, you're probably pretty anxious or pretty um, upset. There's something going on here. So, because what we want to do is we want to be able to breathe from the belly just like babies do, right? They're relaxed, they don't have any stress. And the other thing to notice is your actions or your behavior. So for example, if you wanted to watch this video because you wanted a tip on uh, how to increase your productivity, that's a behavior, right? You look for a resource, you found these awesome videos, um, and that's the action, right? As opposed to another action that might not be helpful towards productivity is just kind of stopping and avoiding the work, right? So that actually is not gonna help you be more productive because you're not gonna feel so good about yourself. So taking an action that can help you move towards that goal and that productivity that you're seeking as well. So if I try to sum up this first mm -hmm. exercise, when you're trying to be mindful of your surroundings and what is around you and what you feel, mm -hmm. uh, you can follow like a simple framework. There are four things that you can try to uh, be mindful of. These are your thoughts, your emotions, your physical your body your body yeah and your behavior and your actions mm -hmm. and a fifth one is also the environment right the mm -hmm. environment that you're in so another way to practice mindfulness is to actually feel deep breath uh, they can be of course compatible this first exercise and the second exercise mm -hmm. but this second exercise we're going to do right now is to do deep breath especially during stressful times, uh, deep breathing is so, so good for you. Mm -hmm. And the reason why deep breathing is so helpful is that when you're stressed out, that activates your sympathetic nervous system, which is a system that activates your fight, flight, or freeze. So you're like, ah, so many deadlines, I can't, I can't, I can't do this, I, I, need, I need a break, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where we avoid, or, um, or we run away, right? Mm -hmm. Or the fighting piece is like, okay, I'm gonna tackle this. I feel the way that I do, but I'm gonna do this. So when we practice breathing, what we're doing is we're activating our parasympathetic system, which is the parachute, which is what brings us down. And that's why breath work works really well, because we're telling our system, hey, it's okay. Let's, let's recenter, let's focus, let's take a deep breath. And so one thing that I like to do and I like to practice with people is just counting to three. So you breathe in, one, two, three, you hold, and then you exhale, three, two, one. So you breathe in, so you can do it with us. You breathe in, one, two, three, hold, and you exhale, three, two, one. And then you practice this. I usually try to do about three repetitions. And what you'll notice is that you're probably gonna feel a little calmer. So notice, how did you feel when you did this this exercise and you can pause the video there to do the full cycle of um, three breathing counting to three and exhaling um, and just notice what what does your body feel like right now what are some of the thoughts that you're having right because um, we're giving our brain a little bit more oxygen to be able to think more clearly so you're probably thinking okay this sounds this sounds great mindfulness you know sounds fine and dandy but I don't have time for this or you know I don't know how to incorporate this into my schedule. 
So the simple thing is to start small and build it into a daily habit. Like uh, you talked about like brushing your teeth, right? Mm -hmm. So something that you can do is you can practice. This can be as simple as a one minute mindfulness to five minutes to 10 minutes to some people do this for a really long time. But if you're quick on the go like me, a simple one minute to five minutes is perfect. And that's gonna help you set your day straight when you do it in the morning. And then another another recommendation is to do it at night just before you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So even just doing the breath work, it's gonna help your body relax so that you can get better quality of sleep. So yes, incorporating it into a, a routine, like a morning routine or a nightly routine, is going to increase the chances that you are actually going to do it and going to practice. So yes, you can have um, very big goals and say, oh, I'm going to practice this for 30 minutes, an hour, a day, and I'm going to do this like for the next six months. That sounds daunting to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know me, you know I'm all about having small goals and mm -hmm. to increment as you go. Mm -hmm. And I think the one minute mindfulness is just perfect because it's just one minute, 60 seconds, right? So the concept of time is really subjective, right? So think about one minute. One minute on the treadmill might seem endless, like, oh my gosh, I still have one minute to go. But one minute snoozing is like super fast, right? So think about it, you know, it's just our perception of it, the way that we think about it. So a one minute mindfulness practice can be just uh, when, you, when you go to have lunch, right? Just the, the mindful practice of what does that taste like, that first bite tastes like, what does it smell like, You're using your senses to notice things. Another one that I have a colleague that does this is she has one of those fancy clocks in her office. Yeah. And I remember I went to a meeting, we had a, a full staff meeting, and it rings on the, on the, on the hour. And so, so it rang, it played a little song, and so she stopped everybody, like in their tracks, and said, okay, everybody take a mindful breath, and then exhale. And I thought that was so clever. So you can set a, an alarm, you know, at the hour, or just like at noon, or whenever you know you're gonna have your break. And so the thing is to incorporate it into small places in your schedule, so that it's, it's just becomes so routine that it's part of your lifestyle, it's part of your well-being. And just notice what it does, right? So notice the thoughts that come up, the, the behaviors, the actions, the physical sensations and what's going on in your environment. And the key here is to do it non-judgmentally. So not telling yourself, oh, I'm not doing this right, I'm doing it wrong, I don't know how to do this. Um, just kind of notice and when we first start off paying attention, um, it, it takes some practice, right? And so you'll get better and better at it. And as a reminder, you can still refer to this video how to create new habits because habits have three components. They have the reminder, the routine, and the reward. If you know this framework, it's gonna be much more easier for you to create these habits and to integrate mindfulness into a part of you. How do you practice mindfulness in your daily life? Or how do you plan on incorporating it in your daily life? Let us know in the comments below. And Dr. Chelly, how can people find you? Sure. So you can find me on social media at Ganas and Go. And I'm on Facebook and Instagram. And I also have a website that you can go to. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I hope you loved my video with, uh, with Dr. Chelly and that you like our new series on productivity and psychology. Merci, au revoir. Hasta luego.